Hello, I'm Dr. Greg Forbes of the Pain and Brain Healing Center here to talk to you about a very common ailment that I see every week here at the clinic. That is of chronic fatigue. Uh, chronic fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome, loss of vitality. It is one of the most common disorders that is presents at the clinic that end with chronic pain. Chronic fatigue syndrome or chronic fatigue of any sort really comes down to, to generally one thing and that is the mitochondria. The mitochondria are these little power plants in your cells that produce something called ATP, the energy molecule that you utilize to do everything you do. Everything you do is uh, generated by the energy from ATP. Now. What can influence this ATP reduction? Well, many of us think of thyroid. Thyroid is one issue. Uh, we have the uh, thyroid producing something called thyroxin, T4, which is converted into T3. T3 goes into the cell and stimulates the mitochondria to produce more energy. Uh, so cells can do the job they need to do. Very commonly then, people with low thyroid end up with issues of fatigue, constipation because the digestive tract isn't working well, um, chills, cold, hair, the hair isn't growing well, all these things. Thyroid can show up almost anywhere because all cells need thyroid to stimulate mitochondrial function. Now many people the fatigue, get a thyroid medication, thyroxin or armor thyroid or something, and yet they still feel like they're um, fatigued, uh, like it didn't do the, the job completely. <clears throat> well, the answer then is many times the fact that the mitochondria themselves are not working well. No matter how much you whip a dying horse, the cart's not going to move. So we need to then address the underlying mitochondrial issue. Very few docs looked at this. Uh, we do an organic acid profile here that measures different substrates from the Krebs cycle within the, from the mitochondria to see if the mitochondria are working well. If they're not, there are certain specific treatment uh, <clears throat> programs as far as metabolic therapy uh, that can help restore mitochondrial function. Uh, so that, that, that's a big issue. Uh, looking at mitochondrial function. Uh, some of the things that can affect mitochondrial function, very simply, iron. Now, an iron uh, deficiency isn't picked up by CBC in low hemoglobin. That's the last thing to show up. We look at a complete iron profile here, looking at uh, percent iron saturation of ferritin. Ferritin is really the only thing that really tells you what your um, cellular iron levels are. So. Many docs are relying on hemoglobin or, or maybe an iron level, but you need to look at more. So <clears throat> if the cellular iron is deficient, the mitochondria won't work well, so you'll have fatigue. Of course, if your hemoglobin is low, you're not going to carry enough oxygen, you're going to have fatigue, but that is not that. Uh, that's usually not missed. So we're talking about fatigue that is uh, being missed by the conventional approach and needs a more functional medicine approach. Uh, along in those lines, um, <clears throat> we also need to look at other nutritional deficiencies that could be affecting mitochondrial function. We do a red blood cell magnesium to look at magnesium issues inside the cell. Uh, magnesium is hugely important to mitochondrial function. Uh, so. There is all these different factors that need to be looked at. Uh, one of the other issues is adrenal. Adrenal fatigue is a little bit different from thyroid and mitochondrial, but still feels the same. Low drive, uh, difficulty uh, getting moving, just feel very fatigued and drawn out. A lot of times there's a history of stress there. The way to diagnose that is to do a uh, cortisol 12-hour uh, uh, salivary test along with other hormones to look at your adrenal function. Um, another thing that's really overlooked and I see a lot of is insulin resistance. Uh, one out of two Americans are either early diabetic or fully diabetic. Uh, it's sometimes called uh, prediabetes, uh, for, but that's really early diabetes. 
And many, 90% of those with uh, early diabetes are undiagnosed. So, because uh, at the conventional doctor is what running a, a, a smack panel with a glucose in it. You know, fasting glucose to get elevated to diabetic levels, you have to have been having insulin resistance for 10, 20 years. With insulin resistance, you're not getting the glucose into the cell properly. Without glucose getting into the cell properly, you're going to be fatigued. Make sense? So we need to see if your cells are becoming deaf to uh, your own insulin, and uh, now then the body can pump, the, the pancreas will pump up more insulin to try to drive the glucose in. But more insulin leads to weight gain and also leads to um, problems with inflammation. Insulin turns on inflammation. So I hope I've illustrated that there's many, many different avenues to fatigue. And a lot of times in conventional medicine, they just throw up their hands and put you on an antidepressant because you're probably depressed, you know. Uh, and that, that's really uh, missing the whole aspect of looking at the underlying metabolic issues to your fatigue. So if you're interested, come by for a free consultation and I'll explain in more depth what uh, is going on with your chronic fatigue and how we can dig into the depths of the metabolic issues and fix it. We do it all the time here at the clinic. It's one of the primary issues we deal with. Low energy, low vitality, chronic fatigue. Give us a call. Pain and Brain Healing Center. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you.